one bitten by bat, one by wolf. It's a ridiculous legend. Nothing. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, where I cover vampires, werewolves, and other supernatural creatures. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Underworld series, which I haven't covered in a while. It's one of my favorites, and this time we're going to look at all the different species. Vampires, lichens, hybrids, how they came to be, and their unique appearance and abilities. Also, I finally received my 100k plaque, so I just wanted to say again, thank you everyone so much for the support. If you enjoy videos about vampires and other supernaturals, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. It helps out a lot and I really appreciate it. This body was able to change the disease. Mold it. Let's begin with the origins of the vampire and lichen virus. Underworld is different than most other vampire and werewolf series because the curse did not begin with a supernatural origin. Instead, it's a virus. Roughly 1500 years ago in Hungary, a man named Alexander Corvinus had become a powerful warlord. Unfortunately, a deadly plague wiped out his entire village, except for Alexander. For some reason, the plague had a unique effect on him. The scientist from the first movie says that somehow his body was able to change the disease, mold it to his benefit. Instead of killing him, he became the first true immortal, not a vampire or a werewolf, a pure immortal without any animal mutations. Theoretically, this is the strongest of all supernatural species, the progenitor. Eventually, Alexander had three sons with a woman named Helena. The twins named Marcus and William inherited their father's immortal gene. His third son had the gene, but it was dormant. This third son would go on to lead a normal life, have children, and die. As for Marcus and William, they were born pure immortals just like their father, but it wouldn't take them long to become the first vampire and werewolf. William was changed first. According to the Rise of the Lycans novel, Marcus and William were riding horses at night and William was attacked by a rabid grey wolf. Marcus managed to kill the wolf and took his wounded brother to seek medical help, but he fell ill. And by the end of the night, William had become the first werewolf. He was turned into a massive wolf-like creature that can stand on two legs. He is the only werewolf with white or light grey fur. He's also much larger than all other normal lichens. Unlike werewolves from other movies, William and the people he bites can never take their human form again. They remain as bloodthirsty humanoid wolves until they die. Only after death will they revert back to their human form. Marcus was later bitten by a bat that presumably also had rabies. Some have speculated that maybe the bat did not have rabies though, and this is why Marcus was able to control himself and William was not. However, that's just a theory. Most believe the animal DNA mixed with rabies mutated the virus that was passed down from their father. It's possible due to Alexander's condition that William and Marcus were born with unstable genes. This possibly means that Alexander could have still been bitten by something and mutated in some way. If he was bitten by a venomous spider, would he become Spider-Man? My question is, would it work with any animal? Both Marcus and William were able to spread their mutated version of the Corvinus strain with a bite or by giving their blood to someone. It was never actually confirmed whether or not Alexander could spread his form of pure immortality through a bite. His blood did enhance a vampire's powers though, so I think it would be possible. It was stated in Underworld Evolution that Alexander could have defeated both of his sons and he never denies it. The only reason he didn't kill them was because he couldn't bring himself to kill his own sons. Not only is Alexander stronger than any other species, but as far as we know, he doesn't have any weaknesses. Vampires and werewolves must have developed their weaknesses when they were mutated by the animal DNA. It's important to note that not everyone can become a vampire or lichen. Selene tells us that most will die within an hour of being bitten. This is probably because their DNA is incompatible with the virus. Also, every time a new vampire or werewolf is created, the Corvinus strain is slightly weakened. Marcus, the very first vampire, would be the strongest, and every generation of vampire after him would be slightly weaker. Same with werewolves. Unlike most other series, vampires in Underworld are not dead. They are not cold to the touch, and their heart does in fact beat. Since their bodies are not dead, this allows them to have children. Now let's take a look at the first kind of vampires. Ordinary vampires are the original species descended from Marcus Corvinus. They appear identical to humans other than their fangs and blue eyes. 
Their eyes do not always appear blue though. I noticed that some vampires like this one in the Old World Coven and Tannis from Evolution have yellowish green eyes instead of blue. Nothing is ever said about what causes this difference. Vampires are created through the bite of another vampire, or they can be born. This is much more rare, but if you are born a vampire, you are known as a pureborn and will be more respected. Pureborns will age similar to a human until their 20s, then they stop. As far as we know, pureborn and turned vampires are truly immortal. Selene is over 600, and Victor was over 1500, and showed no signs of aging since they have been turned. Vampires have great physical strength. They can overpower lichens who are in their human form. However, a transformed lichen is stronger. Vampires have superhuman agility, reflexes, and can move and run very fast. Although not so fast, they appear as a blur. Selim was able to jump off this building that's pretty high and land with no problems. They also have heightened senses and can see perfectly in the dark. Their abilities are very impressive, not to mention vampires and werewolves become stronger with age. Vampires must feed on blood every so often to stay alive and cannot eat normal human food. If they try, it will cause them pain and vomiting. Certain vampires can also access someone's blood memories. By feeding on someone's blood, they can know everything they know and even things they forgot about. A detailed record of someone's entire life is in their blood. We only see some vampires capable of this, so either it's a very difficult skill or a special ability only some possess. Vampires can feed on animals without any drawbacks, but they don't seem to do this unless they absolutely have to. Vampires have an accelerated healing ability that can save them from most gunshots, stabs, broken bones, and more. But they can be killed if they're damaged beyond what their healing abilities can handle, or if they're decapitated. As far as weaknesses, vampires are burned by sunlight due to photosensitivity. Sunlight will burn vampires like a really bad sunburn, and if exposed long enough, they will turn to ash. The lichens used a special kind of UV round that were especially deadly to vampires. The bullets have hollow tips and are filled with some kind of fluid that emits UV light. Other than their weakness to sunlight, you have to kill them like anything else. They are not affected by holy objects of any kind or garlic. Vampires do have one other important weakness, the bite of a lichen. The two strains of the Corvinus virus do not mix. If a lichen bites a vampire, it will kill them. The same is true if a vampire bites a lichen. Some of the strongest vampires are the elders. Elder vampires are the kings and queens of vampire society and there's only three of them. They are stronger than ordinary vampires, likely due to their age and direct link to Marcus, the first vampire. Marcus was considered an elder, but obviously he is unique being the first vampire. Victor and Amelia were the only vampires directly turned by Marcus, making them the second generation. We never got to see Amelia fight, but Victor was shown to be insanely strong. Here's something to put his strength in perspective. Lichens are much stronger than vampires when in their full lichen form. In the first film, we see lichens completely overpower vampires in one-on-one -on -one combat. That being said, the first time we see Victor fight a lichen, it's Raze, one of the strongest lichens. And what happens? Victor grabs him by the throat, snaps his neck like a twig, and finishes him off with his sword. Victor does not mess around. At the end of the first film, he was also about to defeat Michael, the first hybrid, if it wasn't for Selene stopping him. That's pretty impressive considering Michael will go on to be one of the strongest characters in the series. I know Michael was newly turned at the time, so he wasn't used to his abilities yet, but still. The Lycan scientist said that elder blood or pureborn blood was required for Lucian to turn into a hybrid, meaning it must have special properties and possibly a less diluted strain of the Corvinus virus. Since the scientist said that elder or pureborn blood would work, a pureborn must be slightly stronger than a turned vampire. Elders were seen performing one ability that no other vampire did, hibernation, or suspended animation. The elders were able to drain their blood and enter a kind of hibernation for centuries at a time, then be reawakened. Other vampires could probably perform this if they knew the exact process. Although vampires need blood to stay at their full strength, they probably won't die from starvation. I think it's very likely even if a normal vampire went without blood for long enough, they would end up in a state of hibernation similar to the elders. Next, let's take a look at enhanced vampires. A new species of vampire was born when Selene drank the blood of the original immortal, Alexander Corvinus. 
He offered his blood to help Selene defeat his own sons, and it worked. His blood removed her weakness to sunlight, plus it made Selene much stronger physically and improved her healing. She took this talon right through the chest with no reaction, and pulled it out like nothing happened. Selene's eyes momentarily glowed brighter after drinking Alexander's blood, showing us there was some kind of change. If Selene bites someone, they will become an enhanced vampire. Selene can also give her blood to a normal vampire, making them into an enhanced vampire. This form of vampire is even stronger than the previous elders. Enhanced vampires are immune to lichen bites. The blood from an enhanced vampire was even able to bring David back after being bit by a lichen. In Underworld Blood Wars, we are introduced to something called Nightshade. It's a type of plant that is very poisonous to vampires. Ordinary vampires will die if they consume it. Enhanced vampires will not die, but will be temporarily paralyzed and stricken with pain. Although vampires are weak to nightshade, there's no mention of wolfsbane or lichens being poisoned with a plant. There is a group of vampires that belong to the Nordic Coven, also known as Vardor. This coven is so mysterious most believe them to be nothing more than a legend. Truth is, they hide away from the rest of their race to live in peace because they don't wish to take part in the war. If you'd like a video on the Nordic Coven and the other vampire covens from Underworld, please let me know. So, the Nordic Coven is very secretive, and they have developed a special ritual. It involves wrapping the vampire, and this allows them to go to the sacred world. When they return, they will apparently be able to see the world with new eyes. The vampire named Lena underwent this procedure and was able to apparently read people's souls. After this ritual, you can also gain heightened physical abilities. After Selene underwent the ritual, she was able to move at truly superhuman speeds, appearing as a blur. Another member of the Nordic Coven, Lena, was seemingly able to teleport, although this might have also just been super speed. To be honest, this was one thing I thought didn't fit right with the rest of the franchise. Everything up until this point was based on some level of science or biology until this mysterious ritual that grants actual superpowers. Although, maybe another explanation is that being at peace in this way allows the vampire to use their abilities to the fullest extent. That covers the vampires. Now we can look at the different species of werewolves. The first generation of werewolves were much different than the lichens we know today. William was the first ever werewolf, and he was unable to take his human form ever again. His father Alexander said this was due to his anger, suggesting that if he learned to control his anger, he might have been able to transform into his human self. He never did though, and all werewolves turned by William become bloodthirsty savages with no emotion or remorse. As Tannis says, they were a deadly and infectious breed. The numbers of lichens quickly got out of control and threatened to not only kill all vampires, but all humans as well. These original werewolves were very strong, agile, had heightened senses and a great healing ability. They would also turn quite fast. This village was attacked not that long ago. Things are still on fire, and yet these lichens start fully transforming and attacking everyone. The early werewolf virus was almost like a zombie apocalypse. Originally, it was thought that these first generation werewolves were completely feral, but that doesn't seem to be true. In Underworld Rise of the Lycans, Lucian seeks out the original werewolves for help and finds them gathered in a pack. Lucian was also able to communicate with them somehow and ask them to attack the vampire castle. And they did. So they're not as feral as most people think. In Underworld, there are technically two species of werewolves. First, you have the species like William and those he turned, which are not capable of taking a human form. Lycans, on the other hand, are able to take their human form whenever they want. Lucian was the first ever lycan. This was a result of a werewolf biting a pregnant woman. Similar to Alexander Corvinus, Lucian's body was able to adapt the virus in a new way, making him the first lycan. Some believe the original werewolves might be slightly stronger than a lycan but their physical forms seem to be identical, so I don't believe that's the case. The big difference is lichens can transform at will and have complete control over themselves while in wolf form. They also retain some of their heightened abilities like senses, strength, and accelerated healing while in human form. Lucian was very strong and was able to run as fast or faster than a car. Lichens are usually seen having these blue eyes during their transformations or half transformations. 
Lucian had the unique skill of forcing the bullets out of his body. These were silver bullets as well, so the original Lycan seems to have a slightly higher resistance to silver. Later, the enhanced vampire David and the enhanced Lycan Marius could do this as well. Lycans and the original werewolves are immortal just like vampires. Lucian and Reyes are roughly 800 years old in the first film and showed no signs of aging since they had been turned. Lycans can seemingly survive centuries without food. The original werewolf survived over 800 years locked in his prison with no food or water. Lycans are turned in the same way as the first werewolves and vampires, through a bite. Similar to vampires, only a small percentage of the population can become a lycan. They can also be born. It's said a pureborn vampire is very rare, but a pureborn lycan seems to be more common. At least it's never mentioned as being rare. If you are bitten by a lycan and don't die, your transformation will begin slowly. Sweating, pain, and you will experience memories of the lycan that bit you. When Michael was bitten by Lucian, he seen flashbacks of Lucian's past. This is actually how Michael discovered what started the war between vampires and lichens. The full moon does affect lichens. The moon will only force a new and unexperienced lichen to turn against his will, such as when Michael was bitten. Lichens that have learned to control themselves don't have to worry about the full moon. It can make lichens and werewolves stronger though. Usually when a lichen is shot with silver or restrained with silver, it will stop them from making the change. But Lucian, even with silver arrow tips in his back, could use the full moon to aid his transformation. So the full moon is still a problem for werewolves, but mostly just for newly turned. The transformation into their full wolf form will take longer and be more painful for a newly turned lichen. Older lichens can transform painlessly in just a few seconds. Similar to how vampires have their one weakness, the werewolf and lichen species only have one biological weakness of their own, which is a severe allergic reaction to silver. It will burn their skin, causing smoke, and if a silver bullet pierces a vital organ, they will die. Like I said earlier, a silver bullet or arrow will also prevent a werewolf from being able to take their full form. Eventually, the vampires developed something based off the UV rounds used by the lichens, silver nitrate bullets. These are bullets with hollow tips filled with silver nitrate liquid. These were much more deadly to lichens because the silver nitrate would enter the bloodstream and kill them much more quickly. Plus, they didn't have to hit a vital organ and they couldn't be removed. Lichens can go out in the day and can eat regular food like a human. That being said, while in wolf form, they seem to be slightly cannibalistic, eating vampires and humans from time to time. After Lucian's species of lichen came to be, the original species of werewolves completely died off. Or, more accurately, they were hunted to extinction. Estrogen levels high. Intervals between menses holding steady. Just like enhanced vampires, there's also enhanced lichens. Corvinus enhanced werewolves were introduced in the movie Underworld Awakening. Dr. Jacob Lane was director of the company Antigen. They are a pharmaceutical company, and after Jacob became a lichen, he decides to use the company to try and create the perfect immortal a lichen that isn't weak to silver. He achieved this by extracting the pure Corvinus strain from the blood of Eve, a direct descendant of Alexander Corvinus. Jacob started to inject himself and his son with the pure Corvinus strain. This basically had the same effect as Selene drinking Alexander's blood. It made lichens stronger, have better healing abilities, and a resistance to silver. The only difference between Selene and Quint is that Quint's dad kept injecting him with the Corvina strain over and over and over again. This made him grow to an absolutely massive size. He looked to be anywhere from 12 to 15 feet tall and easily the strongest physically of any immortal. He can throw cars like a frisbee. His very large size makes his transformation very painful and takes much longer than a normal lichen. Quint also displayed the unique ability to control his transformations. He could change just his hand into a claw if he wanted to. Normal lichens will have blue eyes, but enhanced lichens will have solid black eyes the same as a hybrid. Jacob Lane had a pretty different transformation than his son did. Instead of being a giant hulking monster, Jacob was more like a wolf man but was still stronger than a normal lichen. Both enhanced lichens could take insane amounts of damage, like being shot point blank in the face with a shotgun. Normal vampires and lichens can heal pretty fast. Large wounds or gunshots might take a few hours to heal. Enhanced vampires can heal even faster than a normal vampire, but enhanced lichens might have the best healing ability. Quint Lane heals from all damage in just a few seconds. Gunshots, 
cuts from a silver weapon, everything heals instantly, so he is very hard to kill. His healing was ultimately part of his downfall, because Selim put a silver nitrate grenade in his stomach and it instantly healed so he couldn't get it out. When the grenade exploded, he actually didn't die from the initial explosion, but had a reaction to the insane amount of silver in his system. This showed us that enhanced lichens are not truly immune to silver, but just have a very high tolerance to it. The lichen Marius from Blood Wars was also an enhanced lichen. He achieved his form by drinking the blood of Michael Corvin, a descendant of Alexander Corvinus. He was drinking straight blood rather than injecting the pure Corvinus strain, so his transformation was slightly different than Quint Lane. Both Marius and Quint had yellow eyes in their wolf form, but Marius looked a bit different. He was almost as large as Quint, but would retain a humanoid head, which I thought was a bit weird. What do you guys think? Should he have just had a wolf head? Or do you like this CGI human head better? Now that we've covered the different vampires and lichens, we can take a look at the hybrids. Part lichen, part vampire, but stronger than both. The hybrid is said to hold unspeakable power, a union of the two bloodlines. The first hybrid to occur in the series was Michael Corvin. Because he is a descendant of Alexander Corvinus, his DNA is able to adapt both the lichen and vampire virus together. Michael was first bitten by a lichen, then later was bitten by a vampire to save his life. He had been shot with silver nitrate bullets and was going to die, so Selim bites him to hopefully turn him into a hybrid and remove his weakness to silver. And it works. Since Michael was bitten by a lichen first, some people refer to this form as a lichen dominant hybrid. Michael transformed into this new form, with blue skin, a slightly larger rib cage, big fangs, and solid black eyes. In later movies, his form sometimes has this slightly extended face like a snout. Not always though. While in his transformed state, he cannot speak, only roar and growl like a lichen. Michael was one of the strongest characters in the series, able to rip lichens apart and even defeated the original werewolf William by tearing his head in half. Hybrids probably have the best healing ability next to the enhanced lichen. Michael could heal from gunshots and stab wounds in a matter of minutes. He also came back to life once. Marcus impaled him through the chest and Michael was dead. However, after being left alone for a few hours, he suddenly came back to life. So as long as the body isn't damaged too much, it will eventually heal even after death. On top of their extra strength, great healing abilities, all forms of hybrid are immune to sunlight and silver, so they have no weaknesses. Something interesting about this hybrid is that although Michael was a lichen first, he can only feed on blood like a vampire. He tries to eat food at a restaurant and starts yelling in pain. Michael winds up having a daughter named Eve, and she is also a lichen dominant hybrid from birth. Eve was similar to her hybrid father, but there is a few differences. Since Eve was the first ever born hybrid, she is unique, even more so than Michael. It's implied that Eve has the potential to be the strongest of any immortal that has ever lived. Even at her young age, her strength is already greater than most other supernaturals and she defeats an enhanced lichen all by herself. Her healing abilities seem to be the best we have seen and on par with an enhanced lichen. She gets a cut on her arm and it heals instantly right in front of our eyes although her healing was slowed when she was starved of blood. Another difference between Eve and her father is that she had blue eyes like a vampire, rather than the solid black eyes like other hybrids. This is probably due to her mother being a vampire. Also similar to her father, Eve could not speak when in her transformed state. She could only growl or roar. Eve had a unique connection with her parents and was able to communicate with them telepathically. Well, it's more like they could see through each other's eyes. This is apparently due to their brain waves falling into sync when they are close enough to each other. I really appreciate how they tried to keep with the biological aspect and not explain things with magic. This ability was technically also performed by Selene, so it might not be specific to hybrids. That covers the lichen dominant hybrids. Next is the vampire dominant hybrid. There has only been one vampire dominant hybrid in the series. This is a hybrid that was a vampire first and then infected by a lichen. In the first film, Marcus is still in hibernation below the floor. Victor kills a lichen while interrogating him and the blood leaks down into the coffin of Marcus. 
This awakens him as a hybrid. The vampire dominant hybrid looks much different than Michael and Eve. Marcus looks much more like a bat with pointed ears and a monstrous face. His nose is also similar to a bat. He gained massive wings that have very sharp talons and allow him to fly. He can even bring the wings out without fully transforming. This form of hybrid has no hair, slightly bluish skin, and black eyes similar to Michael. It's kind of surprising that Marcus didn't try to become a hybrid earlier, but all other vampires will die if they're bitten by a lichen, so he probably assumed that he would die as well. The vampire dominant hybrid is very comparable to Michael Corvin in strength, maybe even a little stronger. Marcus was able to effortlessly pull this helicopter out of the sky. He could also lift this stone door that has to be at least a few tons. Marcus was able to heal from pretty much everything short of being dismembered by helicopter blades. Selene unloads a full clip into his head from point blank range and it does nothing. Although Marcus was defeated by Selene, I don't think it's because she was physically stronger. Rather, Selene was just a better and more resourceful fighter. As far as we know, the vampire dominant hybrid is not weak to sunlight. But we never actually see Marcus walk in the sun, and he seems to retreat right before the sun comes up. Some people have speculated this is because he doesn't know he can walk in the sunlight, which is true because he's never seen a hybrid before and doesn't know what they're capable of. Most likely, he can walk in the sun. Although Marcus wouldn't know the specifics of hybrids, he would know the basics because the blood that turned him into a hybrid was the lichen scientist, and Marcus would have accessed all of his blood memories when drinking the blood. Since Marcus is the first vampire, it's unclear if all vampire dominant hybrids would look like he did. He is the original vampire, and was once a pure immortal, so it's definitely possible his transformation was unique. Rest assured, better the devil you know. The final hybrid I want to talk about is the neutral hybrid. This hybrid was the child of a vampire mother and a lichen father. This shows that although a lichen bite is deadly to a vampire and vice versa, the two species can still reproduce. We know this kind of hybrid is possible due to the film Rise of the Lichens, but we have no idea what they would look like because the mother was killed before she could ever give birth. It's possible the child could still be a vampire dominant hybrid or lichen dominant hybrid depending on the mother or dominant genes. The other possibility is that it would be a whole new kind of hybrid that we haven't seen. Maybe since the genes would be exactly 50-50 split, it would be a perfect mix of vampire and lichen. It's surprising a hybrid is even possible without a descendant of Corvinus involved. There is one final way to become a hybrid. Lucian attempted to become a hybrid by injecting himself with Michael Corvin's blood and elder vampire blood. Since he is a lichen, most likely he would have became the same kind of hybrid as Michael Corvin, but there is always a chance he would have had a unique transformation because no one ever became a hybrid in this way. His blood allows for a perfect union between our species. As per usual, there's one last thing I wanted to talk about. In the second movie, Underworld Evolution, Marcus becomes a hybrid. But what would happen if William became a hybrid? At first I thought he would just become a lichen dominant hybrid. But that's the thing. William isn't a lichen. He's a first generation werewolf, not capable of taking human form. For this reason, I think it's very possible that William's hybrid form would be different than the other ones we have seen. Although he would have to be bit by just a normal vampire. If he was bit by Marcus, he might still become a lichen dominant hybrid, because Marcus also has lichen DNA. What do you guys think? Do you think a werewolf dominant hybrid would be different than a lichen dominant hybrid? That's my video on all the immortal species from Underworld. Let me know what your favorite species is. Mine is probably the pure immortal, like Alexander Corvinus. If there's any other movies or TV shows you want me to cover, please leave them in the comments down below, as I always read through them. If you enjoyed, leave a like, and subscribe if you haven't. It helps out a lot, and I really appreciate it. An extra big thanks to my members for supporting the channel. Roderick, Awesome Pea Shooter, Jason Miller, Cyper2890, Zothras Paradox, Adam Mokabe, Gabriel Ragsdale, Matthew Batson, Dragon Fay Rose, Emily Nixon, Mark Thorpe, Onyx Cat, Stephen556, Owen Wildish, and Joseph Roman. Welcome to all the new members that have joined. If you are a member, I'm going to start posting more polls about future videos, so look out for those. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.